if people want to dream, they are welcome to dream in front of my images. Yes. I was interested to get into a constructed photographic image and the relation between photography and painting. So the filtering of the light to put it in a sunny light or in a, in a warm, cold atmosphere was to shift away an image out of photography into something else. So like it was a concept of not making photography anymore. And every photographer would say, it's wrong, it's too yellowish. And I say, it's not about that. At least a very modern avant-garde idea of photography. <laughs> like we look at so many bad paintings and every painter would say, yeah, but it's not about painting what we are doing. It's about art. I came to the Kunstakademie and I started with Bernd and Hilla Becher. And not that he told me to forget everything I learned, but I had the feeling that I had to forget everything I learned. I was surrounded by the well-known documentary photographer and artistic photographer. And I had the feeling that I have to make something different or to step out a little bit of the grid. Bernd told me, yeah, you need to have a story to tell about. And this was the more interesting and intriguing sentence. Because all this kind of documentary photo photography was always telling us that we are photographer, but not writers or novelists. But he told me, yeah, you should be a photographer and a novelist. I think that I'm closing the bow of history of photography, like an arc. So I'm closing the arc because I'm much, much more closer to the 19th century, connecting and trying to connect from the beginning, painting to photography and to re-step the different steps of the history of photography. At least I felt like I was very intrigued by my childhood, the culture in Italy, about painting, about the Italian Renaissance, the Roman Baroque, the frescoes, the churches, and the culture in general. So looking on 3,000 years of history, over 20 years, every day, it's an imprinting. I think my work has many layers, a historical layer, a personal layer, a psychological layer. So there are many approaches to look at the work. You can be sure that in the serenity of my work, there's a very nervous character behind. <laughs> so maybe it's an autotherapy. Even people say you should not never do your work as a therapy, as an artist. But I had the feeling from the beginning that more than serenity and stillness, it's a loneliness, because they are all introspections. I mean, it's, it's an internal landscape. And this was the only chance to find this kind of work was because I was looking inside me in a certain kind of way, and I found it, the, the situation outside. I mean, you need the moment where you see something. And you can only recognize things that you are able to see in yourself. And this was somehow the approach that certainly the first cityscape was like a canaletto. And I saw this image and I said, wow, you can see a canaletto today. But it was already a translation through my eyes, through my light, through my idea of, of, of photography. And then it's like a self-running system. I mean, then you have somehow you understood something and then you see the things. This Canaletto view of Lyon, it came out of the machine and it was yellowish. And the photographer in me said, it's wrong. You have to go back in the dark room and to filter it in the right way. But the artists were like recognizing, oh, wow, that's it. You find the solution. If you recognized your errors, but you see that they are not errors, but invention, then you are a lucky artist. My work has this open, wide, approach. There's a, an immediacy in the image, but there's a second immediacy. And this is important, I guess. The layer behind, that you have a cultural connection, a connection into art, you have a, um, somehow a long-term 
view. It's not that they are consuming themselves very fast. They are aging. They are aging maybe with the people they are looking at, these images. And this is maybe a thing where I'm proud that they are aging in a good way. I'm sure there is something as a, like a symbolism in my work, but it's not intentional that I'm say, ah, maybe like Sugimoto, this kind of Zen Buddhism in light and in water, the movement. No, it's more like um, I cleaned a little bit the entrance of the image. It's the border. It's something we have an emotional feeling standing at, on the sea to look at something. You have the feeling of greatness and of nothingness at the same time. You cannot go forward because you get wet and maybe you cannot swim yeah, so much as you can walk. It's a border. It's something that attracts you. At, at the same time, it, it stops you. So there's a big ambivalence on water, especially on the sea. And so I guess there's a big ambivalence uh, in me and in my work at the same time. Up to now, my work is hated by many people because they say it's too nostalgic, too melancholic. Maybe romantic, but romanticism is what we call romanticism today or romantic today. It has a complete different meaning to the 19th century romantic period. Yeah? So if you call me romantic on the idea of 1815, I would say yes. If you tell me a romantic in the sense of a candlelight dinner, I would say Yes, but not in art, <laughs> yeah, or not in my work. In the Combré, there is a strategy. Combré is a project to find out if there is a visual memory of a country like France, using the idea of Combré and Marcel Proust, this village éternel he invented, no, as a literal mosaic and puzzle of many memories and. And there I decided to make heliogravure and black and white heliogravure. But in Ninfa uh, and uh, in this garden in Italy, I did black and white and color. By the end, maybe the color are more interesting yeah, for a garden. It's always frustrating to look at a garden in black and white. But maybe they will go their path to these images in black and white. We will see. All my places are real and they are named and you can visit them or you can go. I never take photographs in places where you can't go or they are forbidden. No, many photographers are taking images in places where nobody can go and they have practically the, the first image of a certain kind of place. Um, the idea of paradise, it's strange. I don't have an idea of paradise. I like the the things that had the chance to grow. Maybe in, in a not naive way, I am a positivist in the sense that even ruins are like a cultural in intervention by human being, but then they are getting into landscape and things are growing together. Yeah, And this is what I had in my childhood. If you look at the Roman Forum, it's like a landscape of ruins in a city. And I like this idea yeah, as, a, as a panorama. All the landscapes on our earth are touched. Even you are going in the last lost place, in the moment you are putting your camera on, it's already a cultural landscape. It's not anymore a wild landscape. In the moment you are looking at it, it makes part of our heritage, cultural heritage. So I had the feeling that it's more interesting to look for places that are already in our minds. And this is what many people, I guess, see in my work, that they recognize other places through my images. So they look at Lyon, but they see Venice. They look at Albi, and they see Florence. Uh, they look at Brittany, and they see maybe the lakes in Michigan. Or yeah, so they they have a personal, because they are internal landscapes. Yeah, so I give the place a name. At the same time, I'm 
taking this place in another place. It's a displacement, but a renaming of, a, of the place. I'm always inventing and trying out, you know. It's a quality of daguerreotype. At the same time, it looks like a Dutch painting of Ruisdale, but there's somehow this luminosity behind. And this I borrowed from a German painter of the 17th century called Adam Elsheimer. He was painting on silvered copper with oil, and then he scratched away the blue and the black from the sky so that the silver is coming through, and then this were the skies, so the, the stars. And I saw the, this big retrospective of Adam Elsheimer 10 years ago, and I did, I want to make photographs on silver and copper once. But the technique was not already there to print with inkjet on every material. And now it's possible, and now I can do my stuff. I would call them miniatures, because I already did many big landscapes, and now I'm trying to get smaller. I'm intrigued by this idea to have a big collection of small images, like a museum in a living room. I have no problem with beauty. Germany has a problem with beauty, and this is a historical problem. Two lost world wars, they let think different on, on a kind of beauty. Maybe something like a psychology kind of regression. But I have no problem with beauty and I mean art is always related to beauty. Even it's showing something ugly, the beauty is the other side. It's like a little bit that modern theology says that the evil and God are the same person. So by the end even something that's very beautiful, it shows you all the ugliness of the world at the same time. My mind is German, and my heart is Italian, and at least my landscapes are the views of a German with a Roman light traveling through France.